I'm Sam. And I'm Michael. And together, we bought a sailboat to explore faraway destinations. Join us on our 130 nautical mile passage from Newport Beach to Ensenada, where we encountered an unusual southerly blow with gusts up to 30 knots. We are novice sailors, and this passage pushed our boundaries further and tested our skills. We made it safely to All Saints Bay after 28 hours of sailing and were hauled out for new anti-fouling paint and some minor repairs. Our journey begins one day prior to departure when I fetch Ambrosia off of the mooring ball and bring her to the public dock so that we can load up on gear and supplies. We then set sail bright and early the next morning, hoisting the main in the harbor and making our way to the jetty. Once underway, Samantha makes a wonderful breakfast. So, what have you just made us? Scrambled egg. And it's so good, look. It's got bonito flakes. And what else? Um, peppers, tomatoes, spinach, cheese, a little bit of mayo, and, a, and one meat stick. Oh, yum. It's so savory. I'm gonna go up into the cockpit and enjoy it. So far, everything is looking good. We're cruising along. Mexico bound. The wind direction in the morning was directly on the bow and just shy of a breeze. We tacked with a speed over ground averaging 4.5 knots and a velocity made good of 2.2 knots. Sailing like this was slow going, but the wind gradually shifted, making our starboard tacks more efficient until we could pinch straight to our destination. When we reached Oceanside, the wind had shifted such that we were on a close reach and really making progress. The boat healed less and we were making up for lost time tacking. This was the life I was promised by all the sailing YouTubers. Smooth sailing and at high speeds. Because sailing is so slow, I usually take this time to knock a few items off the effing to-do list. Here you see me replacing our spinnaker number two halyard. Yeah, that's right, we have two spinnaker halyards, and two jib halyards, and so on. The previous owners raced this boat, so there's also 14 winches on the deck. But I never plan on racing, so I downsized all the halyards and sheets from half inch to three eighth. I'm also using Arborist Static Line that I found on Amazon for 30 cents a foot, but they only sell it in 100 foot spools. My mast is 47 feet from the deck, which means I have 6 feet left over to reach the nearest winch and get two wraps around it and tie it off to a cleat. None of my lines are led aft, so this works out perfectly for me. Talk about sailing on a budget. This arborist line has a polyester sheath and a solid polyester core, so it has very little stretch. The trade-off is, it's very stiff and prone to forming assholes, and you can't braid it. You have to use knots or sew in eyelets like I'm doing here. Just off the coast of Encinitas, we encounter a large pot of dolphins. I'm pretty sure dolphins are smart enough to tell a lure from a real fish, but I pull my trailing line out of the water just to be safe. I hate to accidentally hook a dolphin. That was cool. You can see our personal insignia below the spreader. 
It's a reproduction of a petroglyph used by the indigenous people of northern New Mexico to mean migration. I thought that was fitting for a sailboat. Just below that is the Brazilian flag for my dual nationality and for my grandmother, for which my boat is named after. Just offshore of La Jolla, the winds shifted to our beam. Clouds rolled in and a small craft advisory was issued on channel 16. We were making excellent progress at nearly 7 knots of velocity made good. The wind speed was forecasted to ease a little at 11pm, with the promise of much heavier winds through the night. It was at this moment that we had to make a decision. Either tuck into Mission Bay and ride out the storm on anchor, or keep moving right. and ride it out at sea. Still doing 6.9. That's great. And our velocity made good is also awesome. Hey, we just hit 7. We decided that it was too risky to be in a small anchorage with other boats and unpredictable conditions. We were going to reef at sunset and take our chances at sea. We had no idea what was in store for us that night. What you are about to see is two shell-shocked novice sailors after enduring their first real blow. The heavy winds hit us during my night watch around 2 o'clock in the morning. I had one third of the jib out in a fully reefed main when the intense wind hit us. We were healing more than 20 degrees when a very strong gust rounded us into the wind and we turned full circle. At this point I yelled for Samantha, but she was pinned in the bathroom due to the healing. When she managed to come into the cockpit, I turned into the wind and we furled the jib together, regaining control of our heel and setting course. Alright, alright, what just happened? Oh, we just had almost a gale. I think it gusted to 30. to reef all of our sails. It was raining. Uh, yeah, we got caught by surprise. The jib was out way too much. Uh, got turned around in circles, but luckily we, we did some good team work and pulled ourselves together. Put the boat up here. So now here we are with the uh, second reef of the main, and that's it. Doing about three and a half knots speed of the bow. with some terrifying moments. I was a little bit freaked out, but did what he asked me to. Um, yeah, happy anniversary to us. Happy anniversary to us. Did I forget to mention this was our two year anniversary? I love you, Sam. The next morning was glorious. We found a pocket of clear sky to witness a spectacular sunrise, just 20 miles from the port of Ensenada. We were so close we could smell the street tacos, but this forage wasn't over yet. After motoring for a bit, the wind came back on the stern and we flew the jib wing on wing. We were running close to 7 knots and the flags indicate an apparent wind that's around 7 knots, so the real wind was 15 knots here. That looks great, honey. At this point, we were just 12 miles from port and the wind died completely and the rain started pouring. We turned on the Iron Genoa and cruised into the port of Ensenada, right next to the cruise ships. What a sight to behold.
Oh, hey, if you enjoyed that video, consider giving it a thumbs up and stick around for episode two where we officially check into New Mexico, explore the city of Ensenada, eat a ton of fish tacos, and get some boat work done. But for now, that's it. Until later. Goodbye, my friends.